Right, good morning, everybody. Um, so this is a cabinet meeting of South Cambridgeshire District Council. My name is Bridget Smith, and I'm the leader of the council. Leader of the council. Um, could people who are um, online please make sure they keep their microphones muted, and could uh, people in the chamber please keep their phones on silent? Um, the normal procedure at Cabinet is that we take votes by, by affirmation and we'll continue with this tradition. If we do move to a vote on any item, I will ask members if they agree with uh, proposals. So um, this is a hybrid meeting due to the COVID uh, situation. Only those members who are present in the chamber today will be able to move and second motions or to vote. And members present, um, who are present virtually um, are very welcome to speak at the debate. So uh, if members present in the chamber would indicate they wish to speak um, by raising their hands, and members who are attending virtually, if you could use the chat on Teams, please, and uh, our Chief Executive Liz Watts will, uh, will tell me who's, who's waiting. We'll try and take people in the right order. Um, so can I just check that the meeting is quorum, please? Yep, meeting is, meeting is quorum. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we've got various um, uh, non-cabinet members present in the meeting today and members of the public. You're all very welcome. Good to see you all. And various um, officers present both in the chamber and virtually. So if we could start off with item number two, which is apologies for absence. Jonathan, what are our apologies for absence today, please? Uh, good morning, Leader. Thank you. We have received apologies for absence from Councillor Bill Handley, who's a lead cabinet member for Community Resilience, Health and Wellbeing. Councillor uh, Peter MacDonald, who's the lead cabinet member for Business Recovery and Skills. And Grenville Chamberlain, the chair of the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. Thank you. Can we turn the sound up a bit? It's quite, um, it was quite quiet. Yeah, that's, that's, that's as high as it will go. OK, so could people attending virtually Make sure that they're close to their microphones, please. But I think we did. Uh, so we've got, uh, just to confirm, we've got apologies for absence from Peter MacDonald, Grenville Chamberlain, and Councillor Bill Handley. Is that correct? Bill's here virtually. Right, apologies, yes. Okay, all right, fine. Moving on, declarations of interest. So do any members have interest to declare in relation to any item of business on this agenda? Um, if an interest subsequently becomes apparent, uh, just raise it at that point. So any declarations of interest, please? Uh, yes, Councillor Howell. <coughs> Nothing's, working. Nothing's working. Okay, we'll sort that out. Okay. All right, I'm going to just stop the meeting now while we just sort out the technology, please, because it is important that we can hear all members present.
Okay, that's lovely. Right, apologies for um, the break in procedures. Uh, Councillor Howell, you had a declaration of interest. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, I am a county councillor and there may well be things referring to Cambridgeshire County Council in this document. I want it to be made now. As far as I'm aware, I'm, a, um, uh, I'm not got any pecuniary interests, but it um, should be noted. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, so if that's all, uh, we shall now move on to item four, which is the minutes of the previous meeting. And I shall, um, yeah. sorry, Councillor Goff, apologies. Yeah. Following Councillor Howell's declaration, um, I've declared my county council seat in the declaration of interest, but I probably should just, for purposes of this motion, state that to the Mills, you've got uh, you want you want to make a declaration to yes. Uh, if you allow me, we are declaring membership of the county council permanent school builder. Thank you. Thank you. That will be that will be noted. Okay. So if anybody is in the chamber on the teams meeting in the chamber, please make sure your microphone is off so we don't get this feedback loop. Thank you. Okay. So moving on to minutes of the previous meeting, um, I would like to. Um, Propose the, uh, that the minutes are correct, and I believe that's going to be seconded by Councillor Brian Milnes. Yes, I second that. Thank you. Thank you, Member. So, do um, so members are asked to approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 10th of January 2022. I move the approval of those minutes as a correct record. Um, do members agree to approve the minutes? Anyone wish to abstain? And anyone uh, wish to vote against? Cabinet therefore agrees to the approval of the minutes as a correct record by affirmation. Uh, so we're now moving on to public questions and we have one public question today from uh, Mr. Daniel Fulton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fulton, for attending in person. Would you like to ask your question? Uh, yes, I would. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, with the permission of the Chair, I, I do have a substitute question that I do not believe the Chair will object to. Over the past four years, I have consistently criticized this Council for its lack of transparency and its failure to provide access to information which, by law, must be public. Uh, Mr. Fulton, certainly, certainly Mr. there Fulton, have been... Uh, no, Councilor Mr. Smith. Fulton, you, as, as is quite correct, you have submitted a question, um, which is quite clear here, and it's, the question relates to uh, the Conservative Party um, opposition budget and the, um, the addition of an additional enforcement officer. Would you please restrict your introduction to the substance of the question that you have approved. I will not take anything other than direct, directly related um, text relating to that question. Councillor Smith, I've been given three minutes to express my political views. If you no, would like Mr. To, Fulton, if you, you would like you to restrict that given speech, three minutes to express you wouldn't your even object views. to what I was about to say. That, That's right. Mr. Fulton, this, I'm giving you one last chance to restrict yourself to the subject of the matter of the question that you have submitted, after which we, know we will respond and then I will happily take a suitable supplementary question after that. So I'm asking you the last time, please, to restrict yourself to the subject matter of your submitted approved question. I, I have no further comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fulton. Moving on. Right, item six is uh, issues arising from the Scrutiny and Overview Committee and uh, Councillor Judith Rippeth is going to present the report. Um, Councillor Rippeth, do you want to do that now or do you want to um, you know, submit the views of the uh, Scrutiny and Overview, Overview with committee within the body of the agenda? Um, I'll do that now. I wasn't able to be at the last Scrutiny and Overview Committee meeting, um, but I have liaised with Councillor Grenville Chamberlain, the chair, and um, therefore the report is as read and there's nothing extra to add. 
thank you very much. If you would pass our thanks on to all of the Scrutiny and Overview Committee um, who dealt with, I think, a pretty substantial um, agenda. And we're very grateful for their, their input. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. OK, so moving on to um, item seven, which is the Council's business plan. And Councillor Neil Goff is going to introduce the report and move the recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Um, <clears throat> I just want to briefly uh, introduce this uh, business plan. It's my pleasure to, uh, to do so. Obviously, this is the uh, to be read really in, uh, with, the, uh, with the budget. Um, because essentially everything in this business plan has to be funded through uh, through the budget and I can uh, assure uh, cabinet that um, all objectives uh, which are in this business plan have been identified and funded in that in that budget um, the focus of this of this plan continues to be on the four overarching objectives uh, which we specified at the uh, the outset of the, uh, the business planning process for the period from 2020 to 2025. Um, and therefore, this plan is another year of continuity and further delivery against those objectives. Um, most important in this business plan is, in fact, the, the, uh, the delivery, um, the notes of what has actually been achieved, um, which has been really quite remarkable given the year and the period of time we've, we've had with the complications of COVID, quite remarkable that the council and the officers have continued to deliver so successfully against the last business plan. Um, you will also recall that last year's business plan contained a particular focus on the issues of community and supporting business uh, post COVID. That remains critically important. And I'm pleased to say that that's uh, contained within the business plan. Um, so I would uh, like to recommend this uh, to Cabinet as uh, another uh, sort of example of how we are delivering for uh, the residents of South Cambridgeshire against these objectives. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Goff. Um, and I'm very happy to uh, second this. Um, would anybody like to comment on the business plan? Anybody in the chamber? No, um, anybody? No, we've got uh, no, no questions. Well, that's, uh, I hope that's uh, a vote of confidence in, uh, in this. Uh, and I thank officers for uh, the tremendous efforts that they've, uh, they've put into the business plan. And um, I look forward, hopefully, to being able to build on the success of, uh, of the last business plan and um, deliver even more for South Cambridgeshire. Uh, 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 Councillor Bradman, I gather. Councillor Bradman? Okay, sorry. Late, thank, late you. Entry. thank you, Leader. I'm sorry to be slow off the mark. Um, I just wanted to thank very much the uh, Councillor Goff for presenting the business plan, and I'm very encouraged by it. And I, as Chair of the Licensing Committee, I just wanted to endorse thoroughly um, the uh, undertakings under supporting businesses through COVID with help, advice and support, and in particular, the two aspects to do with the street mm. trading sector. Uh, we're revising our policy on that to try and make that more um, um, holistic across the whole district, but also um, support for private hire and hackney carriage sector um, through our upgraded policy. And I think that the, the drivers and the business owners have certainly um, had some challenges during this time and I, I just wanted to thoroughly endorse our wish that we want to support the trade and to enable them to run their businesses um, profitably during this very difficult time. So thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bradman. OK, so if there aren't any more questions. Um, and Councillor Rippers has, uh, has summarised at the beginning. Um, so the recommendations set out at paragraph six of the report um, is A, to consider the proposed 2020-25 business plan at Appendix A, with the action plan, plan primarily focused on delivery for 22-23, and recommend it to Council for approval with any amendments as required, and B, authorise the Chief Executive to make any minor wording changes required to final drafts in consultation with the deputy leader. So do members agree with the proposal? 
Does anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? <clears throat> So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. Thank you very much. And item eight is an interesting one. So civil parking enforcement in South Cambridgeshire, something that's been, uh, been long muted. Um, so we're going, uh, Councillor Neil Goff is going to present this item as well. Thank you, Leader. I'm, I'm, I'm really um, pleased to be able to uh, present this. This is a, this is a very important milestone. Um, and a milestone which has been long coming. I've been involved in this matter personally back to 2018 um, with a meeting with Councillor Fain and Councillor Sample who raised the issues of um, antisocial parking and problems of parking in Shelford, uh, which precipitated a very extensive report from the officers on options which were available to the council. Uh, that report concluded that there was a fundamental barrier in unlocking the problem of introducing civil parking enforcement because of the statutory guidance on funding, um, which, because we did not have any sources of revenue associated with parking, was really very difficult for us to overcome without an external source. I'm now very pleased to say that as a result of our discussions with the Greater Cambridge Partnership, the Greater Cambridge Partnership has now stepped in and unlocked this problem by agreeing to fund the deficit for the first five years. Thanks to, thanks to the Greater Cambridge Partnership for doing that. Um, the county will now be leading on what will be a formal um, application to the Department of Transport for the introduction of civil parking enforcement. But this uh, item uh, seeks our support for them doing that. The process is by no means immediate, and it's certainly very um, intricate in terms of the further steps in the process. And we're probably looking at least to the second half of next year for a reasonable timing implementation. Nevertheless, the sooner we get started with this, the sooner we finish, and I hope we'll all enthusiastically support this uh, proceeding to the next step. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Brian Milnes, I believe you're going to second this. Would you like to comment at this stage? Yes, yeah, thank you, uh, Leader, and uh, thank you to Councillor Goff for explaining the, uh, the background to this. And I, I was myself also involved in those conversations about uh, this <laughs> pernicious problem of inconsiderate and illegal parking across the uh, district. And um, we, we note uh, that uh, Councillor Richard Williams uh, presented a motion to uh, Council uh, to support uh, our seeking of uh, uh, civilian parking enforcement in the district. I think um, since the police abandoned enforcement, uh, the problem has got uh, horrendous in many places, including my own um, ward in Sawston where we see illegal or inconsiderate parking permanently. So uh, I'm, I'm, I welcome uh, the intervention of the GCP with the funding. Uh, as uh, Councillor Goff says, it's un unlocked uh, the situation. And the only thing that I would um, uh, say in reflection to that is that we've got several bodies involved in this. We've got ourselves, we've got the County Council, and we've got the GCP. And there is a question, I think, of governance um, and, and perhaps as part of this process, we can um, just uh, give some attention uh, to that so that we make sure that we're in control. We want a light touch uh, implementation of, and uh, the GCP and the County Council have agreed to that uh, general um, terminology. So welcome and support this, uh, uh, this report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mills. Um, so, do we have any questions on this item? Uh, Councillor Ellington, how nice to see you. Thank you. I certainly would welcome this. I think it is something that we've all hoped would go ahead. My only concern is when it gets to a point that the traffic warden has to impose penalties in order to fund his own job. And I just want reassurance that after the five-year support that you are getting, this is not going to fall into that category. Thank you. Councillor Goff, would you like to respond to that? 
I think nothing would delight us more than at the end of five years for there to be no parking violations and therefore no enforcement officers required. So um, I think that the, uh, the, the objective of this is to eliminate the problem. It's not to create a self-sustaining uh, area of activity of the council. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Councillor Richard Williams. Thank you very much, um, Leader. Just not so much a question, just a comment, really. I just wanted to thank everybody who's been um, involved in this. Um, it, it's good to see a sort of Shelford, Sawston, Whittlesford triangle involved in this, those of us in the south. Um, um, and I just wanted to thank the officers as well, who've been very good in keeping me uh, up to date in, in what's going on. So thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Councillor Bill Handley. Uh, thank you. I just, just want to um, speak in support of this. I think it's very good news. Uh, my village, uh, villagers, both like many villages in uh, around the district, suffers very badly from uh, illegal and inconsiderate parking. This will be very, uh, and I've been um, consulted or, or it's been spoken about in my parish councils for, for many, many months. So very, very pleased and thank you. Indeed. Uh, Councillor Claire Daunton. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, yes, I, like others, I'm very pleased about this and I'm particularly pleased that um, in due course problem parking around our schools um, will be dealt with through this. I mean, I'm sure it's an issue across the district. I know it's an issue in, in our ward. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much indeed for the positive comments. Uh, Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you, Leader. Um, and I also want to sort of urge that this is an opportunity to see more um, more action actually in implementing double yellow lines and, and the like because a, a big barrier to that has been enforcement and that steps aren't taken by councils be or um, police because there has to be a reasonable assurance that they can be enforceable and as the leader is most probably aware um, in Arrington as it's nearby uh, has now double yellow lines throughout the village essentially because of the, the sheer um, just absolute chaos of the parking and dangerous parking there's been um, but it only works if it's enforced so hopefully it will actually unlock more um, action on, uh, on our roads as well. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Councillor Anna Bradnam. Thank you Leader. Uh, like others I absolutely support this and I'm very glad um, that we're doing it and it's a credit to, to everybody involved because I know how complicated it has been to to get this far um, but what I also uh, wanted to ask was that we are involved in um, or have some say in how this will be managed and who will monitor the the um, as it were, the ethos of the scheme. I, I know um, it's been said that it will should. It's ideally going to be a light touch approach, um, but I'd like to know who will be managing the system such that it doesn't, as Councillor Ellington raised, become a heavier touch uh, at at any stage. But also that the whole principle of how it's done. It will be mon will be managed. Um, in my own village, I'm concerned that in due course we might get displacement parking from the northeast Cambridge site, and um, as we already have displacement parking from Cambridge Science Park in my village of Milton. So I just want to be sure how how the um, ethos of the scheme is going to be maintained between the three bodies who are managing it. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bradman. Uh, bring up an interesting point. Councillor Goff. Yeah, thank you uh, very much. So um, I think in terms of the answer to that question, uh, the, the officers uh, of the three bodies, the County Council, um, the, uh, the GCP and uh, South Cambridgeshire, uh, represented by Gareth Bell, in, in, in large part, who's, who's on this uh, call, um, have, have really worked very cooperatively together on this. Um, it's, it's not, while the county is notionally leading in terms of the application, uh, this is not an effort where um, we've anything other than being heavily involved in it. So I uh, would, would say that that uh, is, is going to continue in the future and um, we will be uh, sort of shaping this and working with the other constituents, uh, councils as it goes forward. 
and Lita, thank you very much, um, Councillor Goff. Could I just say, just declare my own um, uh, um, interest as a as a county councillor as well, since others have. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bradman. Okay, so if there's no more questions, so you know we all know parking's a perennial problem in all of our villages. There's no village where you know pe people don't find this intensely irritating, particularly over my driveway. Um, but I think this is a really good news story, and my thanks in particular go to Councillor Mills and Councillor Goff, who put considerable effort into this over years now. It has not been an easy nut to crack. My thanks also in particular to officers of GCP who have been creative in, uh, in un unlocking it, um, as Councillor Goff has pointed out. I think this demonstrates the best in partnership working, and I'm very optimistic um, that this is going to make a real difference to every village in South Cambridgeshire, um, including Arrington, where I was last week for a funeral, and it was good to see that um, the double yellow lines there are at least allowing emergency vehicles to go through, um, which was a bit of a risk before. Um, oh, right. Okay, sorry. So, so that's right. my apologies. Um, so just before I move to a vote on this, um, Councillor Daunton, you want to come um, on this? Yeah, only briefly um, to declare that I am also a county councillor um, so that everybody has declared it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, lovely. All right, so a good news story, uh, Councillor Bachelor. Sorry to come in uh, so late, but uh, I... I I think we need to manage expectations a little bit here. Uh, we're some way off from being in a position to actually implement, you know, because there's a huge amount of work yet to be done. And uh, I think we're not likely to see this being um, implemented, I think, for only two years, probably. Thank you. The voice of, voice of reason, as, as always. I think it's 2023, isn't it, before this is implemented? Um, but it's a very, it's a very encouraging, very encouraging start anyway. Um, okay, so um, the recommendation is set out at paragraph five of the report, which is to support an application by Cambridge and County Council to the Department of Transport to introduce civil parking enforcement across South Cambridgeshire and grant delegated authority to the head of transformation in consultation with the lead cabinet, cabinet member for strategic planning and transport to provide feedback on behalf of the council to the application for CPE, uh, civil parking enforcement, to the Department of Transport and the funding agreement between the County Council and, Great, the, um, and the Greater Cambridge Partnership. So do members agree with the proposal? Thank you. Anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. Thank you again. And num item number nine, which is the authority monitoring report for Greater Cambridge 2020-2021. And it's over to Councillor Toomey Hawkins to present this uh, substantial uh, piece of work. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, good morning, everyone. The um, authority monitoring report that you have before you this morning is one that uh, government requires us to publish every year. Um, it shows how well we are doing in terms of the number of homes delivered compared with the, uh, the number that we have stated in our adopted local plans that we will deliver. Um, just as a reminder, our adopted local plans of 2018 for both councils, uh, City and ourselves, South Cambridgeshire, set a housing requirement of 33,500 homes to be built between 2011 and 2031 for Greater Cambridge. These mean, this means the average housing delivery rate is 1,675 dwellings a year in Greater Cambridge. Today, I'm happy to report that for, 20, for the year 2021, we have not just met that target, we have exceeded it by delivering 1,752 net additional houses. Some will ask, so I will say that 1,335 of those are in South Camps and 417 in Cambridge City. 
And also, of those, we have 362 being affordable homes, 311 in South Cams, and 51 in Cambridge City. It is good news. Um, but for those who like their numbers, I will refer you to Table 1 on page 207 of our gender papers, which shows the housing completions that we've had uh, from 2011 up till 2021. Um, and furthermore, um, if you want more information, Table 2 shows the breakdown in terms of um, the, uh, the settlement hierarchy in South Cams in particular. Um, I'll just mention that 1,332 of the sites delivered uh, from 2011 till date is from the five-year land supply sites um, prior to, with a given permission, prior to September 2018 when we were able to adopt the current local plans. Um, one other thing I'd like to um, highlight in this report is the housing delivery test, uh, which is measured over the previous three years against the housing requirement uh, for the district for that same period. And as you might remember, there are penalties for those councils that under-deliver. So whichever way you look at it, we have to make sure that when we set targets, we actually try and make sure we deliver on those targets. Um, for the last, for the three-year period, 2017 to 2020, which was published last year, um, the figure was 176% for Cambridge and 114% for South Cams. However, the last uh, published report, which was just published last month for the period 2018 to 2021, uh, the figure was 133% for Cambridge, so less than what it was the previous three years. But for South Cams, it's gone up to 145%. Um, this actually confirms the build-out strategy that we have employed uh, between both councils where in the early part of the uh, local plans, Cambridge was delivering at much higher levels because of the sites um, that are on the edge of Cambridge. Um, so the sites um, within the city boundary were delivering higher. And now they're done, the sites in South Cam's boundary are being delivered, as well as sites in the new settlements um, in South Cam's. Also, I think for the first time we're reporting on the Section 106 monies that we've been able to collect and secure um, within, the, uh, within the year. So um, for this last year, the planning service secured 3.2 million of new investment to be spent on future community projects. But also in the same year, it received 3.5 million um, as existing planning permissions were um, built out. And some of the projects that have been delivered include two new pavilions, um, the one at Hoxton and one at Willingham, uh, a new village hall in Cottenham, and we also have a strategic green buffer zone in Melbourne and contributions towards the Great River Ooze Improvement Project at Over. There's a lot more <laughs> in the report. Those are just um, an example. In fact, there's also something about uh, the Falmer Wrong Moat in, um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot happening and I'm glad that um, we're able to provide such uh, facilities in our villages. We are doing well with neighborhood plans. Um, we've designated 19 neighborhood areas and we've made four neighborhood plans in the last year. And um, I think I just signed off a couple of um, referendums as well for the ones that are, have been designated. So there's a lot of work going on. Um, in those areas. I just hope that people will take time to digest the information um, as we have created this year's report in a format that enables you to see what's going on and um, in, a, in a clearer way. We are definitely uh, fulfilling our commitment to tackle the housing shortage and provide more affordable homes for those in most need. And also, finally, I can say that we can set our policies to support climate change are having a positive impact. Um, 
So I propose the recommendations in paragraphs three and four on page 49 of our report to Cabinet. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much, Councillor Hawkins. I think Councillor John Batchelor is going to uh, second this. Yes, Leader, I'm very happy to second this. Um, as we've heard from Councillor Dr Hawkins, this is a good news story. Um, I'm particularly pleased to see um, the strength of our five-year land supply. You know, all of us have uh, suffered from um, the imposition of uh, unwanted developments. We'll be very pleased to see that we've got 6.1 years uh, in hand now. It's also interesting to see how many houses were imposed on us in that five-year land supply issue era, when it's 1,332. Um, I think we've probably all heard enough numbers uh, for this. Uh, I would just comment that 340 pages, well, one, I compliment staff for, for making such an accessible um, uh, report um, with so many complex issues and so many numbers. Um, and I quite understand that it's ma mandatory that we have a monitoring report, but you must wonder the amount of work that has gone into this and the amount of time that staff uh, have had to um, concentrate on this. I mean, there must be a better way of producing a monitoring report which is more concise and less time consuming perhaps. But uh, uh, very happy to second this proposal. Thank, thank you very much. And if I could just specifically thank um, Mark D, who I gather is the, uh, the lead author of this massive, but actually very, very accessible, a clearly set out document. It's an incredibly useful piece of work. And, um, and you know, actually, uh, I, I know it's, it's long, but I don't, we don't have any choice about that. But actually, it's surprisingly easy to uh, flick through it and pull out, uh, pull out various bits of information. So thank, thank you, Mark. I'm sure the midnight oil got burned on, uh, on many occasions. Um, so, questions? Councillor Willi Heather Williams. Thank you, Leader. And yes, there's, there's a lot of uh, numbers, and I do like my numbers. So thank you very much to officers for that. It's, um, it, obviously, a lot of time has gone into those reports. Um, mine's a question, maybe a, more of a process and practical question, Leader, because we're referring to the figures that we published in April 2021. But at the recent appeal in Over, I think it's Over, that it was 978 got discounted and the inspector found that we had 5.6. So it's a procedural issue, really. Do we, do we take into consideration that appeal and those figures or, or do we carry on with our own figures or do we have to take that into account? Because um, obviously um, there's quite a, a difference between the two, it's nearly 1,000 units. Thank you, Leader. I think I'd, quite, I'd like to bring uh, Stephen Kelly in to answer that in the first. In, uh, if Councillor Hawkins wants to answer it. <laughs> um, I will attempt to. Um, if I miss anything, I'm sure Mr Kelly will. We'll ask Mr Kelly to come in as well, actually, <laughs> Councillor Hawkins, if you, don't, um, if you don't mind. The main thing is that the appeal um, actually confirmed that we still have a five-year land supply. We are currently working on... Um, reviewing the sites, preparing for the next, um, for publishing the next uh, five-year land supply figure, which we will be doing, I think, uh, beginning of April. So along with that work, we'll be looking at the reasons given by an inspector for discounting those. I mean, things might have changed between um, when we did the work and now, and even between when gave his um, uh, response and when we actually publish. So we'll be looking at that uh, very carefully. Um, but we have a five-year land supply, 5.6, which means we have a five-year land supply. Um, I'm not sure that there's anything else that we can do <laughs> um, in the meantime. But um, the other thing that was confirmed is that uh, using the 5% uh, for a land supply figure actually is the correct uh, methodology. So either way, we have a five-year land supply. Uh, Mr. Kelly might want to add to that if I've missed anything. 
Thank you. Uh, Stephen, would you like to come in? Uh, thank you, uh, Leader. Um, uh, I think uh, Councillor Dr Hawkins has covered uh, actually the, 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 the key point I was going to make. The Council's position is as set out in its published housing trajectory, which is that uh, the housing supply is 6.1 years. Clearly, the appeal decision is a material consideration. Uh, and uh, as uh, Councillor Hawkins identified, we are reviewing um, the basis for the inspector's conclusion and will um, uh, review the uh, council's published uh, housing land supply position uh, in April uh, once we've uh, had the um, information that we seek from all developers as part of forming that um, uh, supplied position uh, back. Uh, but helpfully, uh, as Councillor Hawkins highlights, the inspector confirmed that our approach in terms of the process uh, is entirely appropriate in terms of the 5% buffer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Sue Ellington. Thank you. I, I do think this document is very useful and, and I do congratulate those who have created it. My, I'm, I'm maybe being very nitpicky and we in this chamber have got very used to using the term Greater Cambridge. But Greater Cambridge what? If you're a resident and you want to get the information that's in this, it really does make you think authority monitoring report for Greater Cambridge what? And I just suggest that it really ought to have something that refers either to planning or housing or building or development within the title so that in future years people can actually find this document when they go searching online. Uh, yes, <laughs> um, probably can't, uh, can't deny that, so thank you very much indeed. Um, Councillor Richard Williams. Uh, thank you very much, Leader. Um, as everyone said, it's a very long document. I'm sorry for picking out something um, right in the middle of it. So please feel free to uh, respond by email if necessary. But I just wanted to ask a question about Brownfield development, which is um, page A217, if that's any help to anyone. Um, the percentage of Brownfield development does seem to be going down. That there, there does seem to be a bit of a trend. And it was 14.2% it was in 2020, 2021. Um, so I was just wondering if Mr Kelly or, or, or Councillor Hawkins could say a little bit about that. Is that a result of just less brownfield development or is it a percentage thing where the percentage has fallen but the amount has stayed the same? OK, I mean, I suspect it's to do with availability that we're using it up, but uh, Councillor Hawkins? Um, I'm afraid I can't answer that question, so I might ask Mr Kelly to. Bring in Mr Kelly, thank you. Um, it, it, it's an important um, point. The, the, the previously developed brownfield sites in, in uh, Greater Cambridge uh, are, uh, in some cases, some of the more straightforward ones uh, have been um, uh, developed. Obviously, some of the larger schemes, which would uh, count in this regard, such as uh, in um, uh, uh, Bourne and North Stow and so on, are obviously uh, previously developed sites but the pace at which they're coming forward is obviously different. Um, I think what the AMR probably um, reflects this year is the build out on a number of those five year land supply sites, as people um, have highlighted already, which were by and large greenfield sites, as opposed to the um, spatial strategies, uh, Bramfield uh, or previously developed sites like North Stone, Water Beach and so on, which will start to figure more prominently i think in the growth strategy as we as we head forwards and in terms of the figures so um before looking at the period of time for this report which is 2020 to 21 uh, obviously a number of our big strategic sites have not really um, started producing large numbers of, of homes so water beach i think started at the earlier part of last year but um we will and we should expect to see those sites making a growing contribution, as well as uh, potential sites like North East Cambridge that uh, I think were touched upon earlier. Are, are you happy with that, Councillor Williams, or do you want to come back at all? Uh, no, no, that, 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 that makes sense. I, mean, I suppose my follow-up would be, I mean, 
are, are we behind then with, with, with North Stowe and the bright brownfield sites? Is, are they not coming forward as quickly as we thought? Would be my only follow up. Mr. Kelly. Uh, I don't think we're I don't I don't think we're behind. It's a reflection of the kind of monitoring period. So, for example, Water Beach, I suspect, makes very modest contribution, if anything, to this annual monitoring report. Um, uh, likewise, Bourne Airfield, um, where we're um, intending to conclude the 106, uh, which is another key part of our growth strategy, uh, equally doesn't make a contribution in this in this monitoring period. Um, and sites like Northeast Cambridge. And even Cambridge Airport in the event that that comes forward in the future, um, uh, which are sizable previously developed sites, um, uh, have not yet um, started to kind of realise their potential. I think delivery on North Stowe is slightly uh, down where we anticipated, uh, but um, that's a reflection in the actual housing trajectory that we've got rather than um, what might have been aspired to at the time of the original planning permissions. So we are keeping track on. Uh, on on delivery uh, and as i said uh, i suspect the majority of the shift in the percentage reflects the build out that we have seen over the last couple of years on some of these five year land supply sites which were all greenfield and making it therefore a substantive contribution uh, to the figures thank thank you very much and i think we have to have a sort of postscript about covid to all, to all of this it's actually a you know small miracle things have kept moving at the rate they have, you know, if we remember, it wasn't that long ago when building sites were uh, were shut down and there was no one on them at all. Um, okay, so Councillor Bill Handley next, please. Uh, thank you, Leader. Uh, and just a simple question: of, um, When will the annual report, monitoring report, be published, and when will it appear on the South Cam's website? Because it's something um, the public needs to see. I hope they've got stamina to read it all. Uh, Mr. Kelly, do you want to answer that? Or sorry, Councillor Hawkins knows the answer. Actually, um, we're hoping today that if Cabinet approves this, then um, we can publish as soon as possible, uh, making any minor changes that you might require from us. That's lovely. If we can just pick up on Councillor Ellington's um, you know, comments about making it, you know, if, if you're doing a search, that it's, it does pop up when you when you do a search for it readily, because it's, it's sometimes it's quite frustrating not being when documents don't have titles that immediately reflect uh, what's in them. So if we, I'm sure we will take that into account. Um, yes, thank, Leader. Thank you, Councillor Claire Dornton, please. Uh, thank you, Leader. Uh, well, actually, Councillor Handley asked my question, um, so I'll just add to that. Um, it, it'll be great to see it published and available on the website. When that is done, will it be brought fully up to date? Um, because I can see one case there where planning permission was granted since it was published, since we it's been um, uh, put before us today. So will it be updated or will what we is published be the version that we see here? Uh, Mr. Ke Mr. Kelly. Oh, sorry. Oh, thank you, Lady. To me, I'm sorry, I'll bring, oh, no, right. Stephen Kelly, please come in. You can pick that okay. one up and I think uh, you wanted to add something else as well. Uh, th yes, thank you, Leader. Um, two, two points. Firstly, um, uh, in response to Councillor Daunton, um, obviously the, the, the monitoring period that we're reporting in this report um, uh, finished in um, April last year and we'll be uh, updating uh, uh, any subsequent decisions will obviously be captured in the next year's uh, report for this year. Um, and so we won't be updating it unless it's a, an error. You can see on page 49, um, a request to delegate to me uh, for minor kind of typographical errors and so on that that may well come forward. So we'll, we'll, we'll just look into that if you if you believe we've got it wrong. The second point was um, picking up on Councillor Ellington and others comments about accessibility. You'll notice in uh, the recommendations that we are also publishing what might be called a more accessible guide to our Section 106 um, monitoring report. Uh, which will be a much more accessible and, and uh, visually interesting document, um, uh, as well as the monitoring report to try and help people to understand what planning permission has um, resulted in through through the um, through the period of time. Uh, that that document's just getting some design work done on it at this moment in time, so that it is um, much more accessible and much more readable than perhaps a very long report uh, or indeed a table with a schedule of costs and contributions and so on, which is rather flattened, uninspiring. So 
Um, uh, we are doing our best to try and make it as accessible as possible. Councillor Ellington's point, we will take away and see what we can do to try and make sure that um, it's re related to planning uh, and people can see that it's um, its purpose is to try and inform about planning and development outcomes. Although it does go much more broadly in terms of picking up um, a wider range of considerations that the District Council has an interest in, uh, not just planning permissions. Thank you very much. I'm really pleased to hear about the um, S106 report. It's something that parish councils are always really interested in. So I hope we will be um, you know, making sure that we send them links, uh, both to this document, but also to the, uh, the supplementary planning ex uh, monitoring document as well, um, because it is something that uh, they ask us as local members about frequently. Okay, so I don't think I've got any more questions. Um, the recommendations um, are that, um, A, we agree Cambridge City Council and South Cambridge Dis Cambridgeshire District Council's Authority Monitoring Report for Greater Cambridge 2020-21, included as Appendix A for publication on the Council's website, so that answers that question, and B, delegate any further minor editing changes to the Cambridge City Council and South Cambridgeshire District Council Authority Monitoring Report for Greater Cambridge 2020-21 to the Joint Director of Planning and Economic Development in consultation with the League Cabinet Member for Planning Policy and Delivery, including the final designed version of Appendix 3. So do members agree with the proposal? Anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation and once again my thanks to, uh, to Mark D who hopefully will get out and see some sunshine now this is, and Jenny, my apologies and Jenny, so uh, obviously a formidable team of two. So uh, yes, hopefully you can both, uh, both go outside now and uh, reconnect with nature because you've obviously been stuck in darkened rooms for a long time. Thank you very much both of you. Um, and moving on to another good news story, uh, which is the biodiversity supplementary planning document. Again, another massive piece of work, um, and which is going to be extremely useful to the council. So, Councillor Toomey Hawkins, over to you again. Right. Thank you, Lida. Um, I'm quite excited to present this report um, to Cabinet today and to our residents. Um, as we are seeing through uh, the planning process, Greater Cambridge is one of the fastest developing areas in the country. Uh, yet, it has a relatively small um, amount of land that is managed for nature um, or wild spaces. And also, South Camps has one of the lowest tree covers in the country. It's therefore important for us that we protect what we already have and enhance biodiversity in our area. And that is what this document before you today aims to do, um, to help uh, by clarifying our existing local policies on biodiversity, as well as the new updated national policy. So this SPD is here today after what is a 15 month journey uh, from when the project was first um, discussed to drafting to member briefings, consultations, and all that goes with this type of work. We consulted very widely with uh, statutory and non-statutory bodies and members of the public, and you will see in Appendix A a long list um, of uh, organizations that we consulted with. Um, and of course, uh, the final drafting includes feedback uh, and suggestions received. Now, the project itself remained in budget and on time for the estimates that we made back in 2020. Um, and hopefully today will be uh, the next step towards finally adopting it. Um, just for information, Cambridge City Planning and Transport Scrutiny Committee actually adopted this document on January 11th, uh, a few weeks ago, without any amendments requested. This SPD will uh, replace the existing South Cam's Biodiversity SPD, which dates back from 2009, so is well out of date. Um, and not, of course, representative of the existing policies that we have. Um, some of the specific advice which I just want to highlight to you today is um, it contains guidance for developers 
on a two-year window to transition from how biodiversity is currently considered on developments to new rules that will require a 10% increase in biodiversity as a result of new developments. And this is in keeping with the uh, environment lack. 100% of all new homes will require an integrated nest, nest box for species such as swifts, and 25% of new built homes will need to include bad boxes. Fences will need to feature gaps for hedgehogs and other species to roam more freely. And we will be encouraging green roofs to create valuable habitat of flowering plants and grasses for wildlife in urban settings. And also reduction in artificial lighting, which harms nocturnal species in their habitats, woodland edges, hedgerows, and wetlands will be required. There are several projects ongoing by various organizations that are relevant to Greater Cambridge and are aimed at enhancing biodiversity or that provide technical support to focus on measures that will achieve this. And you will find those in section 3.6 on page 503 of our papers. All of these have been endorsed or adopted by councils and should be used, including our Dublin Nature Strategy, which we adopted uh, last year. Um, I think I'd like to mention specifically the work that we have done um, recently in producing a Greater Cambridge Green Infrastructure Opportunity Mapping Report. And that provides evidence base of green infrastructure assets that we have um, across Greater Cambridge. It also identifies specific and deliverable opportunities that will enhance and expand the network. And we produce this as part of the evidence base for our emerging Greater Cambridge Local Plan. Um, also, um, mentioned in the report is the Greater Cambridge Chalk Streams project, which I think recently got funding um, for the, from the Combined Authority, which seeks to protect and improve our chalk streams in and around Cambridge. So, as I said, there's a, there's a lot in there as well, um, but I will conclude by saying that this guidance in the supplementary planning document will be a real help uh, to applicants who are seeking planning permission for their developments by showing how they can meet the policies of our local plans as well as relevant national legislation. It provides clear information on how developments can enhance biodiversity from the outset to ensure it is properly integrated into their projects and not an afterthought uh, so that all developments help the environment. I therefore propose the recommendations in paragraphs 3A and 3B on page 349 of our agenda papers to Cabinet. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Hawkins. So I'm very pleased to, set, to second this, and I'm, uh, I'm so impressed with the detail this goes into. So as well as dealing with the very big strategic issues such as um, the chalk streams, you know, the fact that we're asking for swift boxes and hedgehog, you know, tr uh, holes in, in fences. It's sometimes, you know, it's, it's the little things as well as the big things. And I think this is a fantastic, uh, fantastic document. And, you know, and I think it will be welcomed by, by developers as well, you know, many, many of whom are as enthusiastic as we are to, you know, build in high levels of um, biodiversity net gain into, into their schemes as well. And, uh, you know, we've seen some... We've seen some really good uh, schemes put forward by, de by developers, but hopefully this will encourage them all to go, to go even further. What, can you mention the addendum page so that people... Oh, right, okay. So there was an addendum um, circulated, which has some new... Oh, hang on. Have I... There's new text, paragraph one and paragraph. Right, so some new text on paragraph one and paragraph three. Has that been noted? Do I need to do I need to read through this or? Uh, well, it's a slightly reworded recommendation. I think, so we'll oh, I see. Okay. So well, that's the recommendation slightly slightly changed. Okay, so so if you could just note 
um, and I, I will read this out. So paragraph three, uh, the recommendation slightly changed. So it says cabinets recommended to A, consider the main issues raised in the public consultation and responses to the, rec the re representations received and the proposed changes to the SPD as set out in the statement of consultation, brackets appendix one of this report, and B, approve the amended Greater Cambridge Biodiversity SPD, brackets appendix two of this report, close brackets, and to delegate authority to make any necessary editing changes to the SPD prior to publication to the Joint Director of Planning and Economic Development in consultation with the lead member for planning policy and delivery. Is that? Yep, that's what they that's read. Appendix one was appendix A. Oh, I see. So, so the, the only difference is that in under A, it said... It didn't say Appendix 1, it said Appendix A. Okay, fine, that's, that's clear. Okay, uh, so just uh, getting back to it. So, great document. Um, thank you very, very much to John Quinnell and Jane Green for really fantastic work here. Um, you know, I think you've, uh, you've, exceeded, you've exceeded all our expectations with this, so thank you. And again, I'm sure you've also been locked in darkened rooms doing it too. Um, so, going on to some questions now. Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you, Leader. And I think the term you're looking for is hedgehog highway. Um, <laughs> as a member good. of the planning committee, we're quite familiar with hedgehog highways. Um, so it, it's just, just a couple of things. Um, and I'm going to do something that you've probably never heard a Conservative Council say before, but I'm going to quote The Guardian. Um, yeah, I'm getting jeered at. Um, that, said, that said based at, that biodiversity as a, as a, as a concept and a word was only understood by 13% of people when they surveyed. And that was in 2010. And the European Environmental Agency have done a report more recently that says 41% of people out of the 71% that understood or had heard the term actually understood what it meant. And I, and I say that because when I look at um, paragraph 8 about the response rate to the um, SPD, the only 40 groups of people responded. I, I do think it is potentially on accessibility grounds, because I think there's much more people than 40 interested in it in the district. But the words of biodiversity, what does that really mean? And I think the evidence supports that the majority of people just don't understand what it means, or they've heard of it. And, and I think it's very, it's very easy here, and obviously it is a technical document, you know, Biodiversity comes before SPD. Even less people will know what an SPD is to what biodiversity is. Um, but we could maybe in how, when it does go on the website and, and what have you, if we almost try to do some awareness and explanation around it so people actually understand what it is. Um, and I would suggest something like this, because um, it is very detailed, that um, the key to it will be the implementation of it. So some insurance that as committee members and, and officers and what have you, that we will, um, you know, we will be given some support in, in understanding it. Because if only 10% of the population does, that probably only means 10% of the councillors do as well, leader. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much, Councillor Williams. And there's a point well made that I think we can in... Um, you know, when we use, use the South Cambridgeshire magazine, it's a, it'll be a good opportunity to uh, publish some examples of uh, the best in biodiversity enhancement, um, hopefully in, you know, in your village as well, as well as mine. I think we're building a mini, mini forest, or planting a mini forest in, uh, in Gambling Gay at the moment. So, uh, so it's, a good, it's a good point, because actually it's not... It, it can mean all sorts of things, can't it? It can mean more swifts, it can mean, you know, there's all sorts. So um, we'll take that point away and um, make sure that we we do our best to publicise not just this document, but actually what it, what it means in reality and in its implementation. Um, so I've got Councillor Sue Ellington next. I'm having a, having a spill at this week, obviously. Um, I... I entirely support the concept of biodiversity. I very much support a green agenda. I have to say I feel that you're preaching green <laughs> and producing grey concrete, yeah, but yeah. that's my view. Um, one of the things that really, really bugs me at the moment is the A14, which has millions quite literally, 
of nice little trees in nice plastic pots that are as dead as the proverbial dodo. And I am resolved to go and walk round one of my bridges and actually count how many live ones there are in proportion. But I'll wait until a little later into the spring so that I'm not accused of anything. So, and the other thing is that in my garden I have two swift boxes. I also have a recording of swift uh, calls and uh, know that I have swifts that fly over my house quite regularly. And none of them have taken up accommodation. But so there is a lot of difference between what we'd like to do and what will actually happen. And we really do need to monitor what is happening and the outcome and the cost effectiveness of what we're doing. Uh, yes, points well made. I now have four swift boxes and, uh, you know, yes, I will uh, hopefully, I think they're quite fussy, these swift, so um, yeah, perhaps you need to paint your swift boxes, make them more, more attractive. Um, and I, I fear that, you know, dead, tre dead new trees that have been planted are probably a factor of climate change and the fact that, um, you know, we have, we've had very, very little rain in the last year, but, uh, but we will take your point about monitoring and I'm going to ask... They Mr. were planted Mr. in June. Uh -huh. And they were not watered. Uh -huh. When do you expect to happen to them? Well, I, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't accept responsibility for that, but I'm, I'm sure Mr. Kelly will comment. I'll ask him to wind up at the end, and I'm sure he will comment on that and about whether we have any enforcement and monitoring responsibility on the A14, which I really don't know about. Um, Council, um, Can Councillor Roberts. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, leader and good morning. Um, well, badgers eat all the hedgehogs around our way. They don't stand a cat in hell's chance uh, because there are badger sets all around the RSPB in Falmere and uh, they just come and decimate. I haven't seen a hedgehog living for a long time. Uh, however, I, I find uh, all this virtue signalling a bit hard to take. Um, calling about diversity and how green we are when we in reality, are decimating the countryside around South Cams. Um, it's only over just over a week ago when we had a planning committee meeting where we had the uh, Protection for Rural England people there slamming into us uh, about the uh, unnecessarily um, building over everything. And where we had great concerns about the abstraction of water and its effect, and where at Long Stanton the uh, effects of North Stowe has been that the pond is now empty. And I noticed in the Cambridge Evening News this morning, which I quickly read, um, was bragging uh, again about the chalk streams. Well, in an area that relies upon abstraction from underground, how long uh, do you think your promises will be believed by um, our residents when actually they see the uh, chalk streams um, drying up. They are going down. When I moved to Falmere, the stream behind where we live was always full in the winter and always had some water in it in the summer. Nowadays, uh, it's maybe half full in the depth of winter and in the summer, there's not a sign of it. And this is because we are building far too much houses. How can the Liberal Democrats be so hypocritical to brag that they are being green to their core when they are intending to build 49,000 mainly unnecessary dwellings in this, in this district? It's just unbelievable. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hawkins, would you like to respond? Thank you, Linda. Yes, I would. I, for one, am fed up with hearing uh, people who should know better tell us that we're trying to build 49,000 new homes in the district. First of all, that is not true. We identified the need for 49,000 homes for Cambridge City and South Cambridge District Council. Now, of course, of that, 37,000 are already in the pipeline. 
We just discussed the annual monitoring report, or rather the authority monitoring report, that shows that the current local plan, we're building out at an average rate of 1,675 uh, homes. That is what is being built. That is from the current adopted local plans, which the previous Tory administration put together. All we are doing is adding 11,500 in the emerging local plan, which equates to 550 per year, in addition to what is in the current adopted local plans. Those are the facts. And I really would appreciate those who should know better not misrepresenting or misleading the residents of this district. As far as the water issues go, the local planning authority is not responsible for water supply. The Water Resources East consultation started on the 17th of January. They are putting together the plan for water supply in the eastern region. And I asked at the planning committee that was referred to, the representative who supposedly was slamming at us, if they were going to be responding, if they were aware of the consultation, he said they were, were they going to be responding? Yeah, 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 they were going to be responding. Now, how do you blame the Pan Authority for water supply that is not their responsibility? You don't. You work with the organization responsible for the water supply to resolve the issue, and we're working with them. So, let Councillor Roberts, you had your say. Would you please be, show Councillor Hawkins the same respect? Thank you, Leader. So, I would urge everyone listening to this the consultation carries on to the 20th of February, the Water Resources East consultation on the water issues facing this region. It's up to us to work with them, to provide them with our views. We will be doing that as an authority. And I, and I would recommend that the councillors on the side listening to me now, making those accusations, do the same. Thank you, Leader. Uh, thank you. And I'd just like to um, reiterate uh, how pleased I am that the combined authority has seen fit to fund a joint project between us and the city for restorative work on the chalk streams, which, which I think will go a long way to uh, helping give us the information uh, we need about the future and what, what is possible but uh, also hopefully works uh, with partners to do some really good work to bring the chalk streams back into their full glory. Uh, Councillor Brian Milnes now, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think I, I just wanted to point out that uh, this um, biodiversity SPD is not just a, a guidance for developers, but it has impacts on our own work as well. So last week, uh, Councillor Handley and I were uh, out with our, um, Lee Hillam, our drainage manager, water course manager, uh, with one of the local IDB uh, representatives. And it was clear there that, for example, the um, uh, requirement to clear the water courses so that they function properly has to be finely balanced with the preservation of uh, the uh, habitat because that's uh, uh, potentially one of the things that developers will do, is they'll go and clear a water course completely, which I've had evidence of in my own ward, and they stripped out all the vegetation and destroyed the, the, the habitat. So it's, this is a, an, an example, and this SBD is a, uh, is a very good example of how those uh, good working practices can be taken on board so that we preserve habitats, we preserve uh, the um, diversity of species, uh, and, and this policy can percolate into actions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really, ha really helpful points. Um, and um, uh, Councillor Heather Williams, you want to come back? Thank you, Leader. Um, yes, just to say that um, in the numbers, obviously there have been windfall sites as well, so there has been allocations, just, just for the clarity that was asked earlier, above the local plan and, and I do think the, the local plan currently is this council's local plan leader. Um, I do recall the only person to vote against it in 2018 was Conservative Councillor Mark Howe. Um, so uh, I do think we, we sort of need to, yes, yes it was you Mark, um, and uh, you know I think it is the council's plan leader. 
thank you. Right, if I could just bring in um, Mr Stephen Kelly to um, pick up any points which haven't been um, uh, fully dealt with. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Um, I think a couple of points uh, that were made uh, uh, earlier on around comprehension and understanding. Um, yes, uh, we're kind of conscious that that biodiversity is a is a number of different things to different people. The objective is to to not only use um, kind of media type forms, but also uh, we will be looking at our website to try and make sure. Um, that when people, uh, homeowners and others, are contemplating development, rather than use uh, perhaps exclusive terms like this, we are able to give them uh, a bit more of a set of concrete examples and refer to particular bits of the document. So we're very, we're very conscious about that, trying to, you know, uh, move away from technical terms in in planning. Uh, and there is a there is a approach to our website review that is ongoing, that's trying to improve accessibility on. On that point, in in terms of the enforcement, I can't comment in detail about the A14. Certainly, it's something that we can um, engage uh, with Highways uh, England on. Um, but uh, but there is a I think Councillor Ellington is is right in terms of trying to make sure uh, that the measures that are uh, required by the um, uh, planning policy and the SPD guidance are implemented effectively, and that is about helping people to interpret and understand it. And that's partly what our uh, planning advice is, is geared towards. Uh, the other thing, of course, uh, is um, we recognise that not everybody will potentially take up or be particularly welcoming uh, to uh, some of the measures that we've put forwards. Uh, but, um, but I think that the objective of the SPD and indeed the policy is to substantially increase the amount of um, assets that uh, uh, species uh, can take advantage of across the district and to improve, um, uh, even if we can improve uh, the, the, the quantums of um, uh, boxes and um, uh, hedgehog fences and, 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 and so forth, um, we at least improve the prospects and opportunities for wildlife uh, to, to thrive. Um, with the kind of mindfulness that, that that comes forward if we can if we can create it. So um, we do uh, we will seek to monitor um, performance of the uh, policy uh, which the SPD seeks to to support. And of course, um, as we go forwards, the AMR will um, uh, will report how successful we are uh, in doing so, uh, and um, we'll continue. You know, John and the team, uh, I'm sure, will continue to be supporting through the advice that we give um, what people can do to to realize the objectives and and indeed some of those stretch goals uh, that we highlight and the ambitions in the in the SPD. Thank you very much indeed Stephen. Right so I've already uh, read what the recommendation is so uh, if there's no more questions uh, do members agree with the proposal? Anyone wish to vote against and anyone wish to abstain? No, so the Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation and my thanks again to John Cornell and Jane, Jane Green for a really, really good bit of work. Beautifully illustrated, it made it a pleasure, pleasure to read. Lovely little picture of a hedgehog's nose. So, uh, so hopefully uh, Councillor Ellington and I will both by May, which I think is the optimum time, have Swifts in our Swift boxes so we can compare, we can compare notes. Uh, so I think moving on to um, all things financial, uh, the next item is item 11 which is the Summary General Fund Revenue Budget for 2022-23. And um, over to Councillor John Williams to present this. Thank you, Leader. Um, good morning, Cabinet members. Uh, firstly, I wish to congratulate the finance team, particularly the Deputy Head of Finance, for the way the report is set out. Uh, we now have the detail presented in service area packs, which I hope Cabinet and indeed all members will find much more user-friendly and easy to understand. I present to you uh, a positive budget uh, with plans for the coming financial year from this April that put the environment at the, their heart and demonstrate exactly how we are working to tackle climate change on a very local level in South Cambridgeshire. We continue to endeavour to increase annual income sources and reduce annual expenditure without materially reducing frontline services provided by the Council. This has not been made easier 
by the government's financial settlement being for one year only, instead of the three years councils were promised. So I recommend Cabinet approve the recommendations in paragraph three, and that this budget be put to the full meeting of, uh, to the meeting of the full council on the 22nd of February. We know that local people quite rightly expect us to be taking action to deal with the climate emergency that we face, and these budget plans are proof of how our ambitions are embedded across the council. From our business plan, there are also, of course, important contributions towards our other priorities of providing housing that is truly affordable to live in and growing local businesses and incomes. Around 40% of the council's annual budget is funded from local council tax. The rest of the funding comes from sources outside of the budgets of the council's control including business rates and grants. Raising our small share of total council tax by five pound a year for band two, for band D property to 160 pounds 31 pence, the equivalent of 10p a week, would mean that we can continue delivering key frontline services that residents rely on, as well as enabling us to keep working on our ambitious zero carbon action plan and strategy. Band D represents the average property in South Cambridgeshire, with 65,432 such properties in the 2022-23 financial year, an increase of nearly 2% on the figure uh, for this financial year. We understand that for other reasons beyond the control of this council, that households are facing a financial storm this year. So I am pleased that we have a number of measures to help residents with their council tax bill if they need support including the local council tax support scheme, which I hope we will approve later, and one-to-one -one advice from officers. And you'll see that our, as part of our HRA, we are proposing some two additional housing officers to help our tenants and other residents if they have financial problems. And not to get all our council taxpayers, our council tax charge remains amongst the lowest 25% in the country. As you can see from Appendix A, the Council's gross expenditure for the next financial year is expected to be over £78 million, with nearly £26 million to be found after allowing for income from savings, investments, pension adjustments and our shared services partners, etc., before contributions from reserves and taxation and grants. The new Council tax charge will bring in £10.7 million. As you can see, with business rates and grants, we estimate a balanced budget with some 2.1 million going into general reserve funds, uh, sorry, general fund reserves, including 1.1 million from the business rates pool to the renewables reserve, bringing the total of that reserve to 4 million. This is very good financial position to be in, given the current economic circumstances. The total amount expected to be spent on capital costs, that being purchasing equipment, vehicles and property, is expected to be around £48 million. A total of £6.83 million is earmarked for projects, services and equipment that tackle climate change on a, level in, on a local level in South Cambridgeshire. Through the Council's Zero Carbon Strategy and Action Plan, it is supporting the district to halve carbon emissions by 2030, and reduce them to zero by 2050. Climate change related projects featuring in the proposed budget for next year include a 4.2 million plan to install a solar farm at the Water Beach Depot of Greater Cambridge Sheds Waste. This solar farm would power the council's growing fleet of electric bin lorries and support vehicles and vans. A 1.3 million pounds towards equipment and activities to help tackle climate change at Greater Cambridge Shared Waste, such as the purchase of new bin lorries. In 2020, Greater Cambridge Shared Waste began using Cambridge's first electric bin lorry. £667,000 towards initiatives to improve and adapt waste services, encourage recycling and minimise waste. £500,000 towards land drainage and maintenance of the 275 kilometres of awarded water courses which crisscross the district and the council is responsible for maintaining. £342,000 towards the council's zero carbon community scheme 
which provides financial support to parish councils and community groups to promote greener initiatives and reduce the carbon footprint. Sorry, I lost my place there. Problem of working with a laptop. <laughs> Right, and £150,000 for the installation of electric vehicle charging points in the district and £145,000 to complete the rollout of energy efficient LEDs to the council streetlights. Meanwhile, the council's 1.9 million retrofit of its Camborne office is nearing completion. This plan includes measures to dramatically reduce energy bills and carbon emissions from this building. As the electricity grid continues to decarbonise due to the new and renewable energy gener re generation schemes coming online nationwide, the carbon footprint of the building will reduce to 25% of current levels by 2030 and 10% of current levels by 2050, playing a major role in the reduction of the council's own footprint. The work is also expected to help the council avoid steep price rises in energy costs that are expected. Uh, this year. At the Greater Cambridge Share Planning Service, recognising there is a shortage of planners that additional, po that additional posts will not solve, new funding is being proposed towards encouraging more apprentices to begin a career in planning. £854,000 is included in the Council's budget plans for economic development, initiatives and business support. And the budget proposes an additional counter fraud post for our fraud team. As to the Greater Cambridge Commercial uh, Waste, which collects business waste, it has been targeted with a £25,000 increase in profit. Vital frontline services that will continue to be delivered by the Council include collecting recycling and waste from around 66,000 households across South Cambridgeshire. And we handle thousands of planning applications every year across a huge range of sites and projects, environmental health responsibilities, providing homeless support and dealing with benefit claims. This budget is a good deal for the residents of South Cambridgeshire who have seen a transformation in the breadth of services now delivered compared to four years ago, whilst continuing to pay one of the lowest council tax charges in the country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Williams, uh, for that detailed, summa de detailed summary. Uh, Councillor Neil Goff, I think you're going to second this. Yes, thank you. you. Thank you, Leader. I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to uh, second this, and I congratulate uh, Councillor Williams and the finance team for crafting a budget that enables us to deliver the business plan and contains the very exciting uh, projects and initiatives which Councillor Williams has, uh, has outlined. Um, the reality about budgets is that the, um, the sound foundation for those budgets is laid by the quality of the decisions taken in the years before. And uh, this budget is a reflection of the decisions which this council has taken with respect to initiatives such as the investment program, uh, the transformation program, the council tax pool, etc etc all of which are a credit to uh, the officers and in particular the finance team for uh, for, for for making that uh, coherence um, this is a strong budget um, i think it uh, clearly supports what we're aiming to deliver uh, in the next year but it's also a sort of resilient uh, budget as well it puts us in a very very strong position uh, to weather the uncertainty of the uh, financial and economic outlook uh, not just in terms of uncertain financial settlements, but macroeconomic issues such as inflation. So this is a very, very strong uh, position for the council to be in. I'm, I'm delighted to be able to support it, and well done to the uh, to the finance team and the officers and the uh, and Councillor Williams for putting it together. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Goff. Have I got any questions on this? No. I, I can't, Councillor Roberts. Thank you, Chen. I'd, I'd just like to have some understanding because quite clearly the national uh, economy situation is changing dramatically. Not that those of us who read the Telegraph didn't realise it was going to come. Maybe reading The Guardian, you get a different perspective of life. Um, however, I'd just like to understand, given the fact that inflation is rising, 
and that the cost of living is dangerously moving forward. Actually, I'm not sure that you are actually now factoring in what is the reality. I think it's all well, very well and good having lots of ideas and spending lots of other people's money. But um, if we are going to uh, be in a very bad situation, and you know, I think that government should um, be taking away the, the increase in national insurance, and I think it should be also uh, getting rid of the green levy, which is going to cost people a fortune, then I'm not actually sure that your uh, ideas in this budget are actually uh, even doable now. And, and I'd like to understand, are you actually working in what is actually happening now rather than what was happening maybe a few months ago? Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Uh, Councillor Williams, do you want to say anything? Thank you, Leader. Um, well, yes, we are um, factoring in and we are reviewing this um, constantly because of the change in economic saturation. Um, we are being told by the government that uh, the increase in inflation um, is a temporary thing and that next year we will be back to um, around 3%. Um, that's what the government says um, and obviously we have to um, take uh, their advice and the advice of the Treasury and the Bank of England. But we are keeping this under constant review and it's one of the reasons why we are proposing to put council tax up by its full amount, which we can, which is £5 a year, in order to offset one of the things, in order to offset the inflationary tendency of the current, uh, current uh, economic situation. So um, it does surprise me, therefore, that we go on to the next item, that um, the Conservative, part, Conservative members uh, are proposing a council tax uh, freeze, uh, given the current situation with inflation. So, um, yes, we are very mindful, Councillor Roberts, of, the, of what's going on, and we have it under review. But I can assure you that this is a very sound budget and that um, we will be able to um, introduce it. And, um, yeah, we are, we are not expecting, unless things get very, very bad, um, we are not expecting to have a problem uh, going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Goff, your microphone's still on. Is that because you want to come back in? Or? No? Okay. And I think the sad fact is that more and more people are going to be more and more reliant on council services, as I, every time I go into the food bank um, across the road from my house, becomes very, very apparent. Um, so, if there are no more, no more questions, I'm not going to read out the recommendations because they cover the whole of page 745 and 746. Um, but approval by Cabinet today uh, is a recommendation that this uh, budget goes to full council. Um, so, we just uh, move on. So, um, sorry, masses of paper. Mass so, do members agree with the proposals as, as set out in your papers? Thank you. Does anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? No, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. Now, I'm aware that we've been going for an hour and a half. And I'm sure people would like a comfort break, but actually, I think um, if you would like, I will take the opposition group's budget proposals now, and then we'll take a comfort break after that. Otherwise, we'll sort of lose the flow, won't we? Okay, so we'll move to item, tw item 12, um, and we'll start with uh, Councillor Heather Williams um, with the op opposition, the Conservative group's budget proposals. Thank you, Leader. Um, as they are on page 849, um, so obviously these will be moved at full council. I'm not moving them today, but I'm um, happy to um, answer any questions of clarification that Cabinet may have. Thank you very much. And I, all we can do today is note them, but are there any, would anybody like to, so Councillor Williams, you'd like to comment? Uh, thank you, Leader. I'd just like to comment. Yes, I look forward to the debate at full council. But there is one item uh, that I believe I have to respond to now, and that is to explain why council tax uh, shouldn't be frozen. At the very first SIPFA training event I attended, 
I was warned never to freeze council tax. This was underlined by other attending councils, which had and deeply regretted it. There are four sources of income for the council. Council tax, business tax, grants and investments. Apart from council tax, all the other sources are subject to forces beyond our direct control and are more risky than council tax. The government chooses how much business tax is returned to. Most of the grants come from the government and are refenced for specific purposes. And our investment income is dependent upon the economic situation and the government controls on public borrowing. Yes, the level of council tax is capped by the government, but it can be pretty much determined over the medium-term financial uh, period based on housing numbers and comes straight from our residents to us to deliver council services. Any freezing of council tax helps the rich more than the poor. Those who are richer will tend to live in bigger homes and therefore pay a higher council tax ban benefiting from the freeze. Those on lower incomes tend to live in smaller homes where in our case the saving would be just 10p a week or less if they are already receiving council tax relief. We have a number of measures to help residents with their council tax bill including the local council tax support scheme and currently a welfare officer to help those struggling. Indeed our 2022-23 budget provides for money advice officers. The fact that our council tax arrears are very low is a tribute to these measures and to our officer. A, low, a, low, a zero rise will run down our reserves and we will be facing a bigger deficit at the end of the MTFS period. Reserves are invested in assets and loans and bring in income which augments the council tax income. That is why one-off windfalls go into reserves they can then continue to earn money for us going forward. Using reserves in place of council tax for revenue expenditure therefore lessens the total income of the council and reduces council services not just for the financial year in question but for future years. And now the Chancellor is giving council tax payers in bands from A to D a £150 discount and financial support for us to give discretionary relief to those above band uh, D. At a time when most councils are struggling, we have a very healthy financial position, delivering improving services, whilst having one of the lowest council tax bases in the country. This is because we have applied sound financial controls and sought to maximise our income and deliver value for money. I therefore ask that Cabinet reject freezing council tax, and I hope that all council will in due course. Uh, thank you, Councillor Williams. Um, as I say, we can, we can only note it. Um, Councillor Toomey Hawkins. Um, thank you, Leader. Um, simple question, really, to um, the proposer of this. Um, I would just like to know, uh, regarding item four, on what basis uh, one additional officer has been proposed and at that cost because we must have thought about it and found some data somewhere maybe. Uh, do you want to respond Councillor Williams? Thank you. I, I don't think on, on Councillor John Williams is, there was an actual clarification there and obviously this is for noting so I look forward to hearing his, his views again in the debate when it's moved. Um, unless, Leader, you would like me to give the merits of, of the proposal as well, which I don't think you do today, given the conversation Flora, your we have. yours, Councillor Williams. You can do with it um, what you it, wish. If you, if you want me to move the uh, proposal, I'm, I'm getting shaking heads at me, so I think I'm being told not to, Leader. But um, in relation to the question around um, number four, um, so the reason, the costs, um, how that cost is calculated, we've taken advice from officers as to what the cost would be for an additional officer. So I might have to pass to why the 42,000 um, across. The reason that we have um, proposed this is we feel that we would like extra resources in there, not just because of the amount of cases, but the extra demand that some of these cases are taking. And we can see actually on planning committee that certain items have been on there for a considerable amount of time and sometimes years. So it is felt that an extra resource in that area would help not only with the amount of, of cases, 
but also the more complexity that there obviously seems to be because we don't seem to be closing down cases. Um, so it's an attempt to seek that. And also um, that we would hope if we had the resources, then we could start implementing some random selection checks so that um, we give more incentive to developers to actually play by the rules. Um, so that's, that's why. I hope that answers why that's there. And I will move it and exp give all my views on council tax uh, volumes at uh, full council leader, because if not, I think I'm, I might lose the floor. Keep, keep your powder dry. Okay. Uh, Councillor Roberts. Yeah, I think I'll try and keep my powder dry. However, um, I utterly support having a freeze um, on the council tax. There's an awful lot of, there was some comment about rich people. Oh, dear Lord. Um, in fact, you know, not everybody is a taxpayer. There's a huge amount of people who don't pay income tax. And what's happening in this country is the burden of taxation is falling on those people, those hard working people who go out and earn a living to look after themselves and their families. And they are being blasted in every direction. As I say, I'm not approving of the rise in income tax um, in, in national insurance. I think we need to start cutting back in this country and doing things right rather than trying to pretend we can do everything for everybody. And it's the same in this council. You need to cut your cloth according to the size. And we're not doing that. Instead, we're saying, oh, well, there's people out there in uh, something over a bandy. Uh, well, they can pay a few more quid, can't they? And of course, they'll be expected to pay a few more quid on their parish council money. They will be expected a few more quid on their county council money and also the police money, as well as everything else. And these are people who, in general, are on a fixed income. Don't you Liberal Democrats ever think about that? You know, don't you ever think about really ordinary people, not the people like yourselves, you know, with your educated ways and your titles and this, that and the other, but this the ordinary person out there in the street. You should be cutting back. You should not be imposing extra burdens of taxation on nice, normal, ordinary people. It's a time to cut back in this council. If things start improving um, in the next few years, and I don't think it is, I think we're now setting something for the next two or three years, and I see inflation rising, I, I think it will go up. Um, and when you have a Bank of England uh, head who's saying that people shouldn't be asking for uh, wage rises, you, you do wonder if we've run by, been run by the lunatics in the asylum. So you really ought to be reconsidering this and cutting back this year and next year and see how it is in a little while. Think about the people we are supposed to be representing. Not yourself, not your plans, not your... Um, virtue signalling ambitions. Have you got a question, Councillor Roberts, please? Because um, he's, he's speaking um, in the Cabinet, is at my discretion. It is meant to be questions, please. Yes. Why will you not consider the people who are being burdened with so much increase on their cost of livings? Why do you think you are entitled to ask them to give you even more money for your little prize ideas? Councillor Williams, do you want to respond? Um, no, all I can say, all I can say is I gave an explanation as to why I don't think we should be freezing council tax. And I also pointed out that so far as this council is concerned, the uh, Bandy um, uh, council taxpayer, who represents about half the properties in this, uh, in this district, will be expected to pay another five pounds a year. Five pounds a year, that's 10p a week. The government has cut universal credit Hello? by 20 pounds a Hello? year. Yes? Uh, Councillor Cathcart, could you turn your mic yourself, uh, turn your mic off, please? Right, can I just point out that the government has taken away 
from ordinary people of low incomes, £20 a week from their universal credit, to complain that we are putting our council tax up by 10p a week for those people it, you know, it, is well, absolutely beyond belief. And, and I would ask the councillor to direct her fire at the government, not at this council. Thank you. Thank you. I, we're, going to move, we're going to move on. As I say, speaking rights in Cabinet, uh, the only people with speaking rights are members of Cabinet. The rest is at my, dis at my discretion. So we're going to move on now. So, um, members of Cabinet, you are, we are asked to note the proposals. Do you agree? Agreed. Right. Thank you. Moving on. So the Labour Party have also, uh, slightly late in the day, but they're very welcome, uh, submitted an alternative budget. Councillor Cathcart, would you like to uh, present the budget? Well, uh, uh, thank you. Yes, uh, very briefly. Um, uh, I think we, what we're trying to do. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, trying to build on the many ways a very um, uh, uh, the, 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 your your budget, which does uh, have considerable merit, but just widen it out a bit and to, um, if uh, if we can, to improve and build on the quality of life. Also, to recognise things we did some years ago which perhaps we should revisit again um but also try to do it in a way which is consistent with our financial circumstances um and and not actually uh, put an, an, any an unnecessary additional financial burden upon the uh, upon the uh, taxpayers um i don't really want to enter the debate about the council tax but we're certainly not proposing a freeze because i recall uh, some many years ago when we actually had a very low council tax and to some extent we struggled to recover and the difficulty about freezing a tax is you might have to book it up very considerably in future years so I don't think you're doing the taxpayers any favour by going down that route but I think I'll look forward to the debate on our proposals in the in the full council thank you uh, thank you councillor Cathcart and thank you for your thank you for your submission as well um, does anybody want to comment on the Labour opposition group's budget? No? So, so Cabinet, we are asked to note the proposals. So they are noted. Right. So I'm going to stop. Uh, so it's um, almost uh, 10 to. So we will reconvene at 12 sharp, please. Everybody can have a bit of a comfort break and grab a coffee. Thank you very much.
Right. Uh, welcome, welcome back. Everybody is comforted and um, watered, so jolly good. Right, moving on to item 13, which is the housing revenue account budget, and um, councillor, uh, let me just get this right. John, John Williams is presenting, and councillor John Batchelor is, uh, is going to uh, second it, I believe. So, councillor Williams, please. Thank, thank you, Leader. Um, as you know, um, the Council's housing revenue account um, is ring fenced uh, for the council stock of uh, around five and a half thousand council homes and therefore has its own uh, budget plans. By law, we can't subsidise our council housing revenue costs from the general fund and therefore, broadly speaking, must rely on rents from our tenants. This is why we have increased rents by 4.1% to enable us to meet the inflationary pressures we are experiencing to continue to provide a good service to our tenants. This includes the creation of two new staff roles who will be focused on providing money and housing advice. They should be a source of support to residents who continue to face pressure on household budgets, particularly due to the impact of COVID and rising cost of living. These new staff will work closely with the Council's existing advice officers, such as those working in benefits. Additionally, the proposals suggest investing £17 million next year on continuing to build new energy efficient council homes as part of a business plan priority to bring forward housing that is truly affordable to live in. In 2019, it was agreed in the Council's business plan that the number of new council homes being built will be doubled by 2024, and during 2021 22, 89 new council homes were built. This compares to the 36 being built in 2019 20, and 40 and 64 being built in 2021, a total of 189 new council homes in three years. During recent years, these new homes have been built in places like Caldicott, Water Beach, Balsham, Longstow, Great Abington, Hardwick, Foxton, West Wickham, Impington. Combaton, Salston, Castle Camps, Melbourne, and Tevisham. And during the coming years, there are plans for more council homes in many more villages across South Cairns. So I ask you, ask Cabinet to agree to forward this uh, plan to uh, full council uh, for its approval. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Williams. Councillor John Batchelor? Yes, thank you very much. I'm happy to second. Um, this proposal, um, uh, nothing very much to add to Councillor Williams's account, other than perhaps to make the point that in all practical senses, um, the government actually uh, fixes the amount that, uh, that uh, housing rents can be raised. Um, and I would also make the point that we're still trying to recover from the situation where the government uh, forced a 1% reduction over several years uh, in the past. So uh, this is a, a sensible way forward. Um, so happy to commend this proposal. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, do we have any questions? No? Okay, so I shall move on to the recommendations. Uh, again, which I won't read out because they're very long, on page 851 and 852. Um, so are there... Um, let me write the bit. Uh, so do members agree with the proposal? Anyone wish to vote against? Anyone wish to abstain? Okay, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. Um, and so therefore the recommendation will go on to full council. Lovely. Uh, so moving on now to item 14, which is the uh, capital investment programme. And Councillor John Williams is going to uh, propose this and I think Councillor Brian Milnes is going to second it. So over to you again, Councillor Williams. Thank you again, Leader. Um, this um, paper basically um, revises um, and takes into account the um, capital program um, and the and the changes to it that were made on the 6th of December by um, Cabinet. Also, you'll see in 
paragraph 11, um, there have been a number of revisions to schemes and there's been some reprofiling. Um, as a result, our total expenditure for the coming financial year, 22-23, will be over 43 million. And I'd just like to highlight some of the schemes um, that, that that will cover. First of all, the Walter Beach uh, Solar um, Project. Um, that's um, that's the, uh, for our depot uh, at, uh, at Walter Beach, which will enable us to completely electrify our uh, refuge uh, fleet. Um, we'll also cover the purchase of more electric refuge vehicles. Um, and then in North Stowe, um, it will ensure that we can start on the Civic Hub, the Sports Pavilion and the Community Centre. So I hope that, um, once again, I recommend Cabinet that we put forward this to full Council. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Councillor Brian Milnes. Thank you, uh, Leader. I just want to uh, add my support to this and second uh, the uh, report. Um, and particularly uh, pertinent to uh, myself uh, is the electrification of the uh, refuse fleet that uh, Councillor Williams re referred to and the solar farm project for uh, alongside. And I was particularly welcoming of uh, the CPCA uh, grant uh, towards the cost of that. Uh, which will enable us to uh, uh, to provide uh, the electricity that the grid does not support. Um, and uh, there's a very important factor in terms of electrifying some 48 out of the 58 vehicles that we have that are refuse vehicles. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, that's to be welcomed. And I certainly welcome uh, progress with the uh, facilities in North Stone. Uh, so, any questions? No? Okay, no, but quite there. Therefore, um, the recommendation set out at paragraph three of the report recommend to full council the revised general fund capital programme outlined at Appendix A. Do members agree with the proposal? Anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? Okay, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. And moving speedily on to item 15, which is the Treasury Management Strategy. Councillor Williams is proposing this, and Councillor Neil Goff is due to second it. So, Councillor Williams. Uh, thank, thank you again, Leader. Um, in item 15, um, the changes that we have made um, are in red, and I would draw your attention to paragraph uh, 10.3, which uh, highlights the explains the strategy um, for, for this, and also um, paragraph 12.1, item F, which explains the yield that we are now expecting uh, from our um, um, investments. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor um, Goff? I'm just very, very happy to second this and see it go forward to Council. Okay. Um, and questions, Councillor uh, Heather Williams. Um, thank you, Leader. It was just a question on the yield that was referenced, whether um, that threshold will be judged on a per investment basis, so um, in order to make sure that one well-performing investment doesn't um, outweigh against another. Councillor Williams? Yeah, I have to answer that. Yes, I mean, all, all our investments are judged on their individual merits. Okay, any other questions? No? Okay, so recommendations set out at paragraph three of the report. Uh, recommend to Council the updated Treasury management strategy attached to Appendix A to the report, which sets out the policy framework for the Council's Treasury management activity, including one, the Treasury management policy statement, two, the minimum revenue provision policy, and that should be a three, not a two. That's, it's, maybe that's just in my... It's just in my paper. Okay. Treasury indicators. Do members agree with the proposal? Anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. And item 16, capital strategy. So that's uh, Councillor John Williams. And I think, uh, I think I'm seconding that one. So John Williams. Uh, thank you, Leader. I think this is the last... Um, 
item that I am proposing, you'll be pleased to hear. Um, on this item, um, again, the changes uh, to the capital strategy are in red. And uh, the reason for the changes is because we now have to provide an infrastructure funding statement, which is explained in paragraph 6.5. And of course, there's been a change to the Public Works Loan Board um, borrowing uh, rules, which is explained in paragraph 9.3. So I'd ask you to, to approve this. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And I'd just like to take this opportunity at this point to, uh, to thank for you know, all the previous, uh, many of the previous items, both uh, Peter Maddox and Fazana Ahmed and uh, the rest of the team in the finance department for uh, all their hard, hard and very, um, very high quality work. So uh, thanks for, to them. Okay, so let me just... Uh, so the recommendation again set out at paragraph three of the report recommend a full cap oh, i'm sorry were there any questions I, i'm leaping ahead here i do beg your pardon any questions no nope. okay thank you my apologies i uh, recommend a full council the updated capital strategy attached to appendix a to the report which sets out the policy framework for the development management and monitoring of capital investment including credential indicators do members agree with the proposal agree. anyone wish to vote against anyone wish to abstain Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. So we're almost on the home straight. straight. Um, so local council tax re uh, support. Oh yeah, it was me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was you. It was you. No, it's not me. <laughs> so um, that's still you. And uh, yes, and I'm sorry, um, Councillor Milnes, you were going to second the last one, and I, I hopped in. I'm sorry about that, uh, but I will. I will second this one, <laughs> Councillor Williams again. Uh, thank you, Dean. My, my, my excitement of, um, <laughs> of, 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 of uh, completing this. Um, yes, this is basically rolling forward our current um, uh, local council tax support scheme. Um, and uh, I hope that you will agree with me that it's been very successful. Um, I'm very grateful to our officers, to the Reverend Ben's team. And uh, this has proved, um, you know, given all the difficulties that we uh, assumed with universal credit, this has actually been a really good way of, of dealing with those changes in universal credit and has, has shown to be a very workable and uh, practical scheme. So I do hope that you will support uh, this scheme continuing and being rolled forward into the next financial year. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, again, my thanks to uh, Peter Maddox and um, I think it's Dawn, isn't it, who's the other, uh, Dawn Graham, who leads on this very, very ably. Um, so, um, are there any questions? Oh, yes, Councillor Heather Williams, you've got a question on this one. Um, thank you, Leader. Probably more of a comment, but um, the first time I actually sat in this chamber for a workshop was the localised council tax support. Um, and I think it's it's like your, your first... First love, isn't it? it? It means actually something more. The first thing you're involved with as a councillor does have sig a significant importance. And for me, it's this. Um, and when we were talking and, and the workshop was progressing, there was, um, there was a real passion and desire from people like myself and other councillors. I think Councillor Bradnam was there and, and perhaps Councillor Hawkins. But we really wanted to see something that gave people security. And that would only work if it was something that was implemented over a long period of time. And what we didn't want to see was things change year on year on year. So um, very much hope, hoping that you do go with option one, which I think you're going to. Um, <laughs> bless you. Um, and that, um, that it is, you know, we, we stick with that format. There will come a time when it does need to be changed. Like it, the, the previous system needs to be changed because of the introduction of universal credit, um, but um, yeah, I think to change it now would 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 alter everything that we strive to do that day. Thank you, leader. Thank you very much. Do you want to comment on that? No. That, so yes, I agree with you. People people need certainty, and they don't need chopping and chopping and changing. Um, any other questions, please, on this item? Nope. Okay, so uh, recommendation again set out at paragraph three. Recommend to council at its meeting on the 22nd of February 22 the op adoption of option one 
comprising the LCTS income ban scheme currently in operation with an uprating of calculation figures in line with the consumer price index. Do, um, do members agree with the proposal? Anyone wish, wish to vote against? Anyone want to abstain? The Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. Um, so, um, item 18 is the Housing Revenue Account Asset Management Strategy, uh, which Councillor John Batchelor is going to propose, but I'm afraid Councillor John Williams, I believe you're seconding it, so you haven't entirely got off the hook, I'm afraid. Uh, Councillor Batchelor. Right, thanks very much, Lee. Um, before I start, I would just comment on the quality of the reports today. Um, there's been a lot of quite long ones, but they were all accessible and packed with information. Uh, and again, we've got a similar one now, which is the asset management strategy for the next five years and then on to covering the next 30 years. Loads of information here. So I just highlight that there are nine priorities that are set out um, in this. Uh, and one of the key ones, of course, is moving towards uh, carbon neutrality by 2050. And our commitment to that is 440, uh, 443 million pounds that we intend to invest over that, that period. Um, other than that, I'd recommend this to, to you. Um, it demonstrates that we're moving forward, uh, and in particular in affordable housing, where we're, we're taking a much more proactive um, stance now and taking a full part in the market of the 106 affordable housing um, agreements and bidding wherever we, we possibly can, which we will see um, two examples of uh, in our, our next two items. Uh, having said that, I simply recommend this to you, but I would um, mention that Peter Campbell was keen to have a word, if uh, that's all right, Lisa. Lovely, thank you. Uh, so I'll bring in Peter Campbell, uh, who we're pleased to hear from before I ask John Williams to, uh, to contribute as well. Hello, Peter. Hi, hello, members. I'm going to keep this, this, uh, this very short. Um, I mean, uh, housing's the largest asset of the council. Uh, this policy is meant to capture the principles of what we do, how we do, and uh, and, and why we do it. Um, we have had, the, the policy has existed in various iterations for quite some time now, uh, and we've had extensive consultation with members and importantly with, um, uh, uh, with our customers, uh, with the tenants. tenants. Uh, and um, between them made some really valuable contributions uh, through this consultation. Uh, which has strengthened the document. Um, so w when reading through, members will see that some items uh, are highlighted uh, and they're the additions that were made as a consequence uh, um, uh, of that consultation. Thank you. Uh, Peter, and my thanks to you and to uh, Julie Fletcher for the work you've done on this. As, as is, I'm picking up on Councillor uh, John Batchelor's points, you know, the the accessibility, the ease of read of reports, you know, is a, is a pleasure these days, albeit there's over a thousand pages in total today, which uh, was challenging for the, be the best of us. But thank you very much. Um, this is very, very sound work. Um, Councillor John Williams. Uh, th thank you, Leader. Um, I just wanted to point out that I think sometimes people assume that um, we don't have a big influence on the quality of housing stock in the district. However, if you look at uh, the report um, and you look at the uh, section regarding housing stock, actually we account for around 10% of the housing stock in our district. So we do actually have the opportunity here of influencing what happens in our district. And uh, if you take in also, that doesn't include Urban Street. So actually, we have more than 10% influence on the quality of housing stock in our uh, district. And it's therefore, it's very important that we do not only grow our housing stock for people who um, are you know, on low incomes, who cannot afford decent housing otherwise, 
but we also ensure that that housing stock is absolutely of the top in, of the highest quality and that will then will encourage others in the housing market to meet our high standards so you know this is a very important document and leads the way really for others to follow in the district thank you very much indeed councillor williams i absolutely agree with what you say um, i'm going to take um councillor milnes first as cabinet member and then Thank you. I'd just like to reinforce what Councillor Williams just said. In Sawston, we've just taken delivery of two apartment blocks, which are of the highest quality. There's no uh, differentiation uh, between what we're providing and what the commercial market is providing. In that case, uh, we had uh, advanced heating systems, so they had mechanical uh, ventilation heat recovery systems in their solar panels. So we're... Uh, sorry... Uh, the charging point outside the building too. Um, and uh, this is just a, a, another example uh, of the evidence of uh, a very high quality uh, in, in council stock. Thank, thank you. That's nice to hear. Uh, Councillor Williams. Thank you, Leader. Um, just a, a couple of things, um, but on, on what Councillor Milnes and Councillor John Williams have said, um, actually, a big thing that's been done on, on planning, and, and many of us have spoken, um, myself and Council Hawkins, is about tenure blind in the planning process. Um, and just touching on that, I think it's really key that we, we continue to do that as a, as a planning authority and, and that it plays a big part in, in making sure that um, that is the case. In relation to the document, um, and I, I agree with the layout, it is very accessible, so thank you for that to officers. But I did note that it's census 2011, and at some point, hopefully, we will have the data for the most recent census. So just um, whether this, at some point, will be reviewed to, to update it with that census data. That's my first question. And then the second question is just on page 1002. Yes, it has been a lot of reading for us all, hasn't it? Um, that on the graph, figure four, um, it says eight, it, the category is age zero to 10, and then it goes working age 65 plus. That would suggest that the working age starts at 11, um, which I'm sure isn't the case. So I'm wondering if it's a bit of a typo or perhaps it isn't, um, that information isn't available or separated, but I thought that probably should get clarified at some point. <laughs> yes, hopefully we've moved on from, from the Victorian times. My kids would have said it did start at 11, actually, but... Um, no. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, who can... I, um, shall I come to um, Peter Campbell about the question about this being updated in light of uh, the next census data? Well, we are actually in the process of doing our own review as well, but uh, I'm sure Peter can update us on that. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Zorn, I mean, this is intended to be very much uh, a living document. Um, so we will be updating it when the census data is available, but we won't be waiting for that information before doing an update. Um, um, you, you members will notice that one of the references made a number of times is the need to carry a stock, uh, carry out a stock condition survey. Uh, and certainly once information from that's available, we'll be revisiting the, uh, the, the business planning aspects uh, in response to that. Uh, Councillor Daunton. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, and thank you for the report. Um, thank you, Peter. Um, I'm pleased to see um, on page 1050 um, a note about the communal rooms um, and the uh, attention that's going to be paid to the communal rooms and also specific mention of external areas, the maintenance of external areas. Um, and also um, pleased to see the note about the garages, um, that alternative options for some of these are being explored. Um, so thank you for that.
Um, so this is because the next items contain information which is commercially sensitive. Members of the public are advised that if Cabinet agrees to exclude the press and public, the video stream will end. I therefore propose that the press and public be excluded from the meeting during consideration of the following items of business in accordance with section 100A brackets 4 of the Local Government Act 1972 on the grounds that, if present, there would be a disclosure of them to them of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of schedule 12a of the act brackets as amended is that seconded uh, councillor neil goff thank you do members agree with the proposal does anyone wish to vote against anyone wish to abstain uh, cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation so members of the public who are watching the webcast this means the video stream will now end thank you for joining us to view today's uh, cabinet meeting I note the next meeting of Cabinet is scheduled to take place on Tuesday the 22nd of March 2022 at 10 o'clock and uh, we look forward to seeing some of you at that. Thank you.